everyone. Welcome back to Build. I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper, and today I'm sitting down with actor Mark Paul Gossler. His new series, Passage, is a thriller focused on a secret medical experiment that could either save humanity or wipe it out completely. However, its success or failure relies on a young girl and the man trying to protect her at any cost. Let's take a look. What are we doing? I thought maybe this was a nice place for you to say goodbye to your mama. It's important. It should have been a service. What do you want me to do? Maybe you can say a memory. Something nice that she did. You mean besides being a junkie? Yeah, I mean besides being a junkie. She was your mother. Anger is poison. Maybe you can leave some of it here. OK. One time for my birthday, she made a birthday cake out of donut holes and put whipped cream on top of it and let me eat it for dinner. That sounds delicious. What else? She let me lay in her bed and watch TV. If I ever got scared, she never yelled at me about it. I like that a lot. What else? She said, That was the joy of her life. She said that all the time. <laughs> Everyone, please help me welcome Mark Paul Gratzler. Huh. Well, that was uplifting. You really God. set a super somber Let's tone. Let's start off right with the uplifting <laughs> part of the, uh, the, the, of the uh, series. That wow. was easily like the most emotional part of the pilot, too. So Yeah, that was it, a big one. It that's really a, was. That's a big one for me, too, uh, being a father of, of a, in real life yeah. of a girl her age and hearing those words when she said, you know, the joy of her life. I mean, I get choked up here doing, just thinking of that right now, but... Um, that the interesting part of that scene is like a lot of people think like oh you know it's all glamorous and stuff. It was pouring rain that day, and there's a rush. That river doesn't rush like that uh, normally. It was it was a pouring rain. We had to worry about flooding oh at that during that scene. It was like at any moment we're going to be pulled away and uh, and and have to run for our lives. That's amazing how you can keep such composure and it's such like a <laughs> somber, calm scene. And to know that it was like literally yeah, a hurricane it, around. It turned you. out really good, and 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 a testament to the to the writer uh, Liz Heldens. Uh, she's our showrunner, and she's the one that adapted the books into uh, a series for television. So let's talk about the books. This is based uh, based off of a trilogy, right, by James Cronin. Justin Cronin. Justin Cronin. Yep. And uh, it's a really popular book. Yep. So how did you become a part of this project? Had you read the books first? Did you see the script first? What was your kind of entry point? No, I saw the script first. Uh, I had a relationship with the uh, studio, which is 20th, um, because I was on pitch at the time. We were waiting to see what would happen to pitch. It was about that time where, you know, in between season. And uh, I read the script, fell in love with the scripts, read the books, fell in love with the books, and realized, oh my gosh, this is an amazing opportunity, and I want to be on this. So I, uh, I, I went you know, put my name in the hat and said, I want to play this character, Brad Wolgast. I always wonder if it's easier or harder to have a series that's based off of a very successful book. And how much does this stick to the storyline? Does it take a lot of differences? Yeah, what that and, and to preface it, I'm a huge fan of the books. Uh, so I wanted them to stay as close as possible to the books. I'm like, there's no other way. We have to, we have to stay close to the books because they're perfect. Um, it, the pilot... Uh, what, what, what you see in the pilot and what you'll see in the first season, uh, we did 10 episodes, we stay within the first quarter of the first book. Uh, and the books are, you know, a thousand pages each, and there's three of them, so there's a lot of material for us to, to work off of. We stay very close to the, what the books, uh, the, the story the books tell. 
And does your character um, in developing him, was it useful to have the books to go to? Or did you have to kind of create parts of him on your own? No. I, I, and, and specifically with my character, Brad Wolgast, he, in the books, it's very well defined. It was that way in the pilot. This relationship is very, very well defined in, in the books. And as well, you know, we, we did it in the show. This is the heart, really, right. of the show. It's it, it has this, you've seen now what, three episodes? You've seen two episodes. Yeah, yeah. But you, you understand, like, the, 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 the sort of heart of the story is this relationship and then the whole genre wrapped around it with these beings uh, that sort of are based on, a, on the vampire myth. Yeah. Uh, these humans that have been converted into these vampire-like beings. Yeah, I didn't know what to expect when I read the synopsis, yeah, and then it's I crazy, sat right? down, and I was like, I'm not really into vampire stuff, but yeah. let's check it out. Yeah. But the way that it's, like you said, how it's woven with the emotion, yeah. I mean, I can't it's wait huge. to watch more. It's huge, though. It's the, huge. the story is huge. That's it's what a, it's about. It's kind of hard for me to say, like, what the what is it about? Like, yeah. if you said, well, what's the passage about? Well, there's, you know, this story, and then there's the story between... You know, the, 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 the people that we use as test subjects and their backstory, which we go into the whole, uh, the, the run of the first season. Um, but it's it's a big, big tale. So it's um, the most ambitious uh, project I've ever been a part of. Yeah. And especially for television, to bring this to, to broadcast network is, is pretty incredible. It's huge. And we talked about the emotion, but also there are a ton of sort of moral dilemmas that you're faced with yeah. as you're watching because yeah. they're doing these medical exper yeah. experiments that involve humans. Yeah. What would you do? What would you do? Right. And so how fun was that to sort of dig into, you know, you're trying to do something for the greater good, but you may be causing damage to individuals as well. Yeah, there was a lot of interesting conversations on set between the actors and, and, and the crew. Um, but as as uh, the part of the job is you just have to go along with it. I mean, even if you don't feel comfortable with it, that's a challenge of, of sometimes being an actor uh, and the roles that we play. So it, it was it was just an interesting component to the process. But uh, I think the, the audience will really enjoy having those sort of moments where it's sort of water cooler talk in a way. Like, would you save the world or would you save a girl? Yeah. I was very conflicted. <laughs> I <laughs> right? really, I like, I, I couldn't go yeah. to sleep last night. I was like, what would I do? Yeah. Especially because the little girl's so cute. And she's it's like, so darn I don't cute. Know. She's so darn cute. She's so darn good at her job. Uh, she's she's amazing. That's Sanaya Sydney, right? Sanaya Sydney. She's phenomenal. I remember her from was it Fences? Fences. Yeah. And yeah. so, um, what is it like? She's your scene partner in a, a lot of at least the first two episodes I saw. Yeah. So in the very first episode, you know, obviously I apprehend her and. Spoiler alert, we go on the run, which you saw, you know, is, is at the river. We shot it in a linear fashion. So my very first scene with her in the foster home where I, where I apprehend her, uh, that was probably our first day of really meeting and you know, her being uncomfortable with me and, and, and not trusting me. That, that sort of plays on screen to, you know, flash forward to us uh, filming that scene at the river. That had been two weeks after uh, uh, production had started, so we had a bit of a, a relationship brewing. But she was she was funny. We, I remember the the scene right prior to that where we're sitting in a car, and I say, "Hey, let's go. I, I got a special spot for us." Um, I remember her saying uh, something like, uh, "You know, somebody told me you you, you played a character Zach Morris." <laughs> and I was sitting next to her, and I go, uh, "I go, yeah, yeah. I've I've been told I played that character." And she goes, uh, "Well, I don't know that character. The only Zach I know is Zach Efron." And I was like, wow, okay. And she goes, he's going to be my husband someday. And I go, great. <laughs> so she had no idea what, I, what my background was. It was great. You know, this little girl, she was 10 or 11 at the time. Uh, we we're having these conversations right before, you know, and action. You know, it's, it's, it's fun. It's fun I, I mean, and you were a child actor. So is it interesting? Do you ever offer younger actors advice? Because you kind of know the road that they are going to have to go on. What am I going to say? You know, it's like, I would, I would never do that. I would, like, what are you, you know, who are you, old man? Like, you know, I would never say that because I would never want anybody to say that to me. I, I picked up, you know, being a, being a child actor, I picked up experience. I, I, I learned from experience. I learned from, from watching people that I respected, the way they carry themselves on set, um, you know, and, and I, I, I just learned from every job. And I just, I did, by example really with her, because I'm not going to sit her down and say, you know, when I was your age, because uh, it's different. It's different for everyone. I was going to say the industry is probably completely different, too, so. I wouldn't even, I don't think I could survive in, in this type of industry now. Uh, it's, it's crazy, like the whole social aspect of it all and, and the pressure that these 
children have, you know, to, to perform. It's, it's a whole nother business. Super intense. Yeah. Um, so in this role also is very, uh, physical for you. And I know in NYPD blue, you played a cop and you had to do some kind of cop type things, but this is sort of like hand to hand combat, yeah. a lot of gun shooting. So yeah. what kind of training and preparation did you have to do to prepare to pl play Brad? Well, physically I'd, I had just come off of pitch. So physically I had a little bit more weight. Um, actually a lot more weight. People are like, he's, looks like he's gained a few pounds. Um, like but a tour I, roll. Yeah, it's like I had a beard on it in pitch. That's why I looked that way. Uh, but no, I, I had a little, I, I gained weight for, to play a major league catcher. And I thought for this role, it would look, it would, it would fit the part, the, uh, the sort of paternal figure uh, to have that weight sort of, uh, you know, opposite the, 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 the physicality of, of, of this little girl. Um, so I kept that on. Also with training, um, I, I went back to sort of jiu-jitsu, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, which has been in my past before, but I really put my head down because I thought this character, being a special, ex-special forces, would have that sort of training. Uh, tactical training was done by the same guy who uh, trains uh, Keanu Reeves for John Wick. So I... I uh, I basically finagled my way into that. I told production, I think my guy would definitely have the same training John Wick did. So uh, I got to get trained by him, um, which I, he, he didn't need that much training, but uh, you know, oh. it's one of, the, one of the perks of being an actor is that we get to do research for the roles. And uh, I saw on your Instagram you were shooting some guns, actually, with your wife. So you brought yeah. the family into it, too. Yeah, that was another thing. When I, I, I carried over that training when I was... We, we filmed this entire series in Atlanta. And uh, there were some people out there that are competitive shooters. Uh, all this stuff is done on ranges, but they're, they're competitive shooters. They, they, they teach you tactical weaponry. And um, I trained out there and brought the wife, you know, just to, to sort of have her be proficient and comfortable with firearms and, you know, in a safe environment. So you filmed this in Atlanta. Um, how was that different filming there versus maybe like on a Hollywood set or something like that? Uh, it's Hollywood. It's it's Hollywood there. I mean, Marvel and all these huge tentpole films have have pumped and uh, pumped up the industry so much there that the uh, infrastructure is is like anything you'd see in 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 Hollywood. I think they're the biggest production outside of London, and then next is Los Angeles uh, for big tentpole films. Brittany, why are we holding microphones? I know. Sometimes they get I mean, Honestly, sweaty. like, this is 2019. I know. And, like, I think people, it makes people feel comfortable, like they're part of a conversation. You know, if we were mic'd, it'd be a little, like, less... But then I could use my hands, like, you when I talk still to you. Use I, I feel like I'm, like, right? I feel, like, a little stiff here. It, I, it's like Talladega Nights. Hello, like, Brittany. I don't know what to do And welcome hands. back to the Brittany and Mark Paul no. show. Mark Paul, yeah. lean back and just throw an arm and well, just I get... Well, I have to undo my jacket and... <laughs> You know, that's a whole nother thing. But it's, I mean, you could ditch the I'm going to switch hands now. There we go. Ooh. Whoa. You are a professional. <laughs> you could ditch the mic and just yell. <laughs> I could. Or somebody could just hold my mic for me, right? No, no, no. <laughs> I, I, I could just see the headlines on that one on Twitter. Mark Paul. Uh, you know, Fan holds mic. Pretentious. Uh, pretend, uh, no. <laughs> Fan holds mic. The highest bidder. You know, no. It's for charity. That's fine. I'll just get arm pumped holding my mic myself. Yeah, just keep switching it up. Yeah. I have to because it gets sweaty. It's kind of yeah. gross. We'll work on that. Um, so you, like we mentioned before, you've been in the game for a while. What draws you to a project like Passage or what draws you? Because you've been, your TV credentials are extensive. You've, you've played on a lot of different shows. So what is it that draws you to a project? I'm always looking for something that has legs. And what I, what I mean by that is you know, you want something to go for at least three years, four years, five years. I love working. I love, I love what I do for a living. I love the collaboration with my, with my peers and the crew and the, and the production. Um, when I looked at this project, I, I have had a very good experience with 20th and Fox and the shows on Fox. Uh, and the pedigree behind it, Ridley Scott, Matt Reeves, it's kind of a no brainer, you know, and, 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 and when you, when you, I haven't done it a genre, so when, when you get offered a genre role um, with the character-driven aspects of this particular uh, project, in a way, it's a no-brainer. And my thinking is, okay, will this have the legs to go for many years? And if it does, I want to be a part of it. Yeah. Uh, you're obviously in front, of the, in front of the camera, but I know you're also doing a lot behind the camera. 
including EPing and upcoming project for Fox. Yeah. So tell us about that project and what you bring from your acting experience into being an EP. Yeah, it's pretty pretty cool. I, I like I said, I have a really good relationship with Fox and Twentieth. Um, I have a development deal with Twentieth, and and um, I I found a drama that was a, a French format. It had been on Netflix for two years. Uh, very cool cop noir um, uh, with a, with a with a protagonist being a, a female detective. Um, brought it to them, and it was you know we're we're currently at Fox right now uh, writing the script, and hopefully fingers crossed we we make a pilot. Uh, currently also working to produce a um, a, uh, a comedy with uh, uh, the uh, uh, producer from uh, The Bachelor, Elon Gale. He wrote a book that's entitled "You're Not That Great, But Neither Is Anyone Else," and uh, we're going to develop a comedy out of that. Um, you know, as as an actor, you're always looking to sort of challenge yourself, and and um, I think what I bring to the table is is having had 30 plus years. Yeah, we're that old. Uh, 30 plus years uh, of being in front of the camera and being in, f you know, working as a collaboration with crews and productions and, and sort of having a little bit of knowledge of, of how it gets done. A uh, lot of knowledge. Yeah, but, you know, it's, it's, it, I still feel like I'm, I'm learning so much being on this side of the camera uh, um, that it's, it's, a, it's a new world for me and, and that, that sort of stimulates me and challenges me in ways I haven't before. Um, and I, I don't know. I don't know how, how, what my longevity is uh, being in front of the camera. So you're always looking for uh, an escape route, you know? Are there any other challenges behind the camera that you'd want to take on? Any other roles that you would be interested in kind of trying out? As an actor? No, like behind the camera. Oh, behind the camera. Um, I really enjoy directing. Uh, I've directed two episodes of, of television. One was for Franklin and Bash, and one was for a Stephen Bochco project that I did. I'd really like to continue directing. It's, it's, it's just a, a little, I'm having a hard time working it into my schedule as an actor, because um, my, my acting gigs sort of take precedence. Um, but I, I eventually like to, and the producing stuff is kind of fun, because I can still do that while, I'm, I'm working as an actor, but the, the directing, you know, it's like, I have to be on another set. Yeah. Uh, I have to say, I think this show has legs. I really, I watched the first two episodes. I'm not just pulling your chain. Like, I really enjoyed it. The yeah. heart, but also the thriller part. That wasn't too scary. You're not a genre person. I'm not I'm a genre not person, really and I don't either. like scary stuff. And well, it I was like, scary stuff, like a I, perfect it, balance. Yeah, I think so, right? Yeah. I mean, it's got, a, it's got, a, it's, it, I think it, it hits all those components right in the sweet spot, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's you know, because you couldn't say it's, oh, it's just a vampire show. Uh, you couldn't say it's, oh, it's a heartfelt drama. It's a warm, fuzzy thing. But it has all those components, which is hopefully going to, uh, you know, satisfy the viewers. Yeah, I think you guys are going to love it. Uh, before we get out of here, I know we have a couple questions for the love audience. Questions, yeah. uh, who do we have first? Yes, you can hold my mic. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Mark. How are you doing? Is it on? Yeah. OK. Um, you kind of touched on it earlier. Um, when you were in pitch, you and Mark Consuelos were in baseball shape. You were like, you had to prepare for baseball shape. But baseball is stop and go and stop and go. In this show, you're doing a lot of action. You said you were doing training, jujitsu. Um, is it very hard? Is it difficult for you to do a lot of these action scenes? And, and do you have a double? So I do. I, I don't have a, a specific double. We, we, I, I can say that in the run of the show, I th I can I can confidently say I did 98% of my own stunts. In the pilot, there's only one shot, and I'll I'll tell you what it is. It's an Easter egg. The 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 part that's not me is the guy gets thrown up against the bookshelf. That's not me. They won't let me get thrown up against the bookshelf. Um, but the rest of that fight scene is me. Uh, a lot of the choreography that we do, the the sc the stunt choreographer, um, he's a he's a practitioner of Brazilian jiu-jitsu. So there's actually a scene in episode seven where there's not a punch thrown; it's all grappling and kind of fun uh, jiu-jitsu stuff. Uh, so it's 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 fun. It's it, I I I I love I love that part of my job, like the the whole thing of pitch too, where. You know, we would play baseball. I played baseball for a year uh, and just lived that lifestyle of, of working out like a baseball player and eating like a baseball player and playing. Um, and this particular role is just a little, you know, there's, there's weapons and physical and all that stuff. It's fun. That's, I, lo I, that's, I could do that stuff all day. 
Is there another skill that you would really want to have to learn for a role? Something that you've been kind of like, dying? Yeah, like um, if you had to play a musical instrument. Ooh. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool. Because I don't really, yeah. I mean, I noodle around on a guitar. But to have to learn, force yourself uh, to, to learn an instrument would be really cool. That's what I talked to the guys from Bohemian Rhapsody, and they're like, "Yeah, we had we learned, yeah, because we had to kind of like do it justice, but yeah. otherwise we wouldn't have done it." I mean, I was totally playing when I was on uh, Friends Forever on Say by the Bell. I mean, that was <laughs> that was totally me. You know, that was me. I mean, and I sang that song that was not lip sync. Yeah, that was totally me. I look back at that and I go, "How did we get away with it?" Oh, I mean, but it was I'm so literally, cool at the time. I'm literally doing this on the neck. I'm like, I'm not even playing chord. I'm not playing a single chord. No. Nobody said a word. They were like, oh, dude, how is that? You're so good at that song. Can you play that for me? We were just like, like looking I, at your hair and your smile. Like, even that was fake. I mean, I was like, <laughs> nothing about that was real. I love when people go like, is that your natural hair color? No. How is that a natural hair color? You can't even, like, that's not even, you can't even check that off on a driver's license. Like, what color is that? Platinum? Right. <laughs> well, it was platinum in some episodes, and in other episodes it was like, you know, speckled. He started giving you some roots. He started looking a little Well, yeah. Then I, I, well, I was kind of into, like, vanilla ice, mm. and so I had that sort of, like, two-tone thing going on. Yeah. Like, every season it changed yeah. based on what I was into at that time. So, yeah. And little Sanaya will never know. Le well, she is now. She's watching the show. Oh, good. Yeah, so she comes up to me. She's watching the show, and she'll come up to me, and she'll go, time out. <laughs> I knew I and liked her. And I, and I said, I'll say to her, I go, Sanaya, that doesn't work on me. I'm, I'm, I'm the guy who does that. That doesn't work on me. Try it on the, on, on the camera guy, oh. you know, and see if it works on him. <laughs> like, you can't do that to me. So she sounds yeah. amazing. That's yeah, she's awesome. A, we have, a, we have a good time. Yeah. yeah. And uh, next question is here. Hi, Mike Paul. I wanted to say I'm so excited to be here today, but I want to bounce off that question. How did you prepare for the emotional part and get in the headspace for that character? Uh. I have four kids, and uh, you know the, the the thing with this is I have to kick it always to the writing um, because it's on the page. Um, a lot of the uh, throughout the, the the season, Liz Heldon, the, um, the the showrunner, would say, "Oh my God, it was an amazing scene you did in, for instance, episode seven. And I would say, "Well, Liz, you wrote that scene." She goes, "Yeah, but you could you could have messed it up." I go, "It's really hard to mess up scenes when they're written like that. I mean, every word." that came out of our mouths in that scene was written. And so my job is to just sort of feel it and kind of understand where the character is coming from. And, and maybe there's a point in my life that I can use, you know, something, maybe an experience with my own children. Um, but like I said, the, the words that she used, the joy of my life, like if, if my daughter or my son said that to me, it would just, I, you know, it, it's just those words are like a, a, a catalyst for me to sort of show emotion. So definitely, but I have to say, the way you emote the words is what also gets me. That's nah, editing. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, editing. Yeah, it's, Those it, are fake yeah. tears. Those are no. fake tears. Sometimes they are. And by the way, sometimes we do use fake tears. It's hard sometimes to you know cry about something that you just it's not based in reality, and you have to you know say hey I need a little help here, um, and. There's no shame in that. No, I don't. I don't. I don't think there is. It's just a tool that actors have. It's, it's, it's menthol, uh -huh. that they'll sometimes blow into your eye. Uh, my trick is to sometimes just like rub it with my finger, and then I just put uh -huh. right there, and then just the aroma of it starts to kind of make you tear up. <laughs> but you still have to like. You can't just have a tear and not have any emotion. But you know. But sometimes it's hard. Like a director will say, "I need a tear f out of your left eye because the camera's right here," and you're like, "Dude, you know." <laughs> Not a machine. It's not like Drop. just put a quarter in the slot and I'll, you know, cry in command. But well, um, whatever you guys are doing, yeah. it works because the passage, like I said, was such a joy for me to watch. I can't wait for you guys to see it. And if you want to check it out, it premieres on Fox on January 14th. Give it up. And Mark. make sure you sit down and watch it because a lot of people will say like, oh, I streamed it on Hulu or whatever. It's like, yeah, that doesn't help. Yeah. You have to watch broadcast shows on the night they come out. Or in the first seven days, I think, like, uh, it matters. But it really matters that people sit down and watch. And you have to lock in. Don't be on your computer. Don't be on your phone. Watch it. <laughs> you can have it playing in the background. It's no, okay. No, sit down and watch it. I mean, I'm, I'm fine with that. I mean, as long as it's on, what do I care? <laughs> well, it's so great chatting with you guys. Make sure you check out the show on January 14th. Give it up for Mark Paul Gosselin. Thank you.